What's up everyone? Welcome back to Just Finished Coding. This is part 6 of our Tic-Tac-Toe AI series on Scratch 3. So let's get coding. Just Finished Coding. Now quick interjection here. If you've not watched parts 1 to 5, please watch them before you come here because you're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very, very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch those videos and then come right back. In this video, we'll be dealing with a function that will continuously check if either the player or the computer has won. And then we'll get into the thumbnail and also the end screens along with the animation. So without further ado, let's get right into our program. So the first thing you want to do is to head over to your computer sprite and you want to modify the code of this check winning um, function but you want to create a new function for that by just modifying the code. What I mean is that you have this working function and we want a similar function. So I'm not going to delete this function or anything like that. I'm just going to create a new one. So click on make a block within blocks and I'm going to call this function end game. And I'm also going to give it a parameter which says add input or text. And I'm going to call this site. And this is going to correspond to either X or O basically either the player or the computer or their respective uh, figures. So click OK and you should have this nice big uh, defined end game pop up. I'm going to move it all the way to the bottom. So now when you look at this check winning, uh, what you want to ch uh, change is all this code inside, but what you want to keep is this basic blueprint. So I'm going to click duplicate so that everything's duplicated and I want to move right at the bottom and put this uh, all this code right into this function as well but I want to remove all these ifs and all these if else's and put them into the bin. And now you should have just this two lines of code inside your end game function. So what this end game function is going to do is that it's constantly going to check if either the player or the computer has won. And it's going to do this by utilizing the winning sequences list in our variables category, which we have right here. So we're going to uh, make a working that's kind of similar to this, but a little bit different. So what we'll always check is we'll basically have a counter that's going to keep changing, you know, I by one. And then I is going to correspond to each item in the list. And then we're going to check if each of those letters of the particular item I within the winning sequences list is well either the X symbol or the O symbol or the side in our case, which is the parameter. So let's get right into it. Before I do that, I'll just increment i by one so that I don't forget to do this um, later on because this would, if you don't do this, your program would crash in a way. So now let's get into our, you know, main code. So grab an if then, and uh, what you want to uh, do within that if then is first of all, you want to have three ands, okay? Each corresponding to a particular letter. And uh, within the first and, I'm going to put an equals to, and uh, on the right side, I'm, I'm going to drag and drop this side parameter. And uh, within the left side of the and, first thing I want to do is to grab a letter one off, and this is going to correspond to letter one of that particular item of winning sequences. And I want to grab this uh, block of code, which says item one of possible moves. And I want to change that item one to be item I and also change that possible moves to be winning sequences. So there we are. And uh, we want to do this right inside our code like that. Now think of what this would actually substitute to. So item I of winning sequences, let's just assume that I is one for now. So item one of winning sequences would be one, two, three. And the first letter of that would be one. And if we check if one is equals to side, that's basically never going to be the case. So what we basically have to do is to check if the board list or our square list actually has that element or basically this entire element, letter one of item I of winning sequences as the side. And that is what will give us a meaningful result. So you wanna change this code by just nesting it within this block of code, which says item one of possible moves change that possible moves to square list and put all of that code inside that item and put that right there and you are good to move on. So we need to check if all of this is the case for letter one, then letter two and then letter three. 
So I'm gonna just duplicate this and put this in the end right here. So put this right there. And uh, I also want to duplicate this one more time so that I can put it in the second and. And you wanna change all of these letters to uh, from letter one to letter two, and then you wanna change that to letter three as well. And this is what is going to happen in case the winning sequence is um, basically either the player or the computer has actually won. Here's what you need to do inside the if then. The first thing I'll do is to initialize a variable and click on make a variable within the variable section. And I'm gonna call this variable side and this is going to correspond to the side that won. You should have already initialized your win variable but if you haven't done so then go ahead and do it right now. So the first thing I want to do is to set the side to be um, either the x side or the o side or basically the parameter which the um, which we're going to enter in when we call this particular function. So um, say set side to side and then you want to set win to be true. So set win to be true. There we are. Right before this, I'll also do a couple of things and that's to first of all, actually let me do that after. So first of all, I'll broadcast a message which is going to be called game over and uh, this is going to ensure all the sprites stamp themselves for a reason which I'll come to a little later. But game over is going to be broadcasted when the game has basically ended. Now before this, here's what I want to do. I want to make two new variables the first one is going to be called start core and the second one is going to be called end core and uh, this is actually having to do with our animation and what we'll do is to basically have you know a sprite and that's going to move to the particular square which says start uh, core and then it's going to draw a neat line until end core. So in, in our case let's just say that winning sequences it was the first item okay. So uh, the winning sequences list initialized when it was one, two, and three. So let's just say the player has all of these squares. So what the animation is going to do is that, first of all, it's going to go to start core, and then that is going to be one, and then it's going to make a neat line to end core, which is three. So we'll have a nice animation pop up. And to do that, we actually need the sprites to be behind the pen and sprites can't be behind the pen unless they're stamped. So that's why we have that entire stamped in our code, which I did initially. So that's the explanation for that. So what we need to do is to set the start core to be uh, letter one of item I of winning sequences. And then we will need to set end core to be equals to letter three of item I of winning sequences. So just move ahead and you can duplicate this. I'm just going to duplicate letter two and put that right in there and change that to letter three. And there you go. Your sprites uh, are actually ready for your animation. The next thing you want to do is to import your animation sprite. And to do this, I've added a downloadable link in the description below because the thickness actually matters. And although it's just basically a circle, you might want to consider using my sprite, but this isn't that hard to figure out. So if you do want to use your own sprite and draw it, then please go ahead and do so. You just have to crunch the numbers a little bit to figure out the right one. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that. So within choose a sprite, click on upload sprite. And I'm also going to import my thumbnail along with that. So click on draw and thumbnail and then click open. And you should have those two sprites pop up. There we are. And uh, while that, yeah, it just got imported. And I'm gonna change the size of that drawer to be, um, where's that? Yeah, I'm gonna change the size of this to be about 20. So click OK. And now you can see it's a lot smaller and a lot more bearable. So now I'm gonna head over to the draw sprite and here's what I need to do. So first of all, when the green flag is clicked, we're gonna hide the sprite. And uh, when we're gonna show is when we actually receive game over. So when I receive game over, uh, change that comp to play to game over and you want to say go to from the motion category um, change that random position to be the start core variable and uh, that's the reason we're naming all these sprites one two three four and so on one is to correspond to their square numbers but also for this animation so go to start core and then we need one more line of code which uh, says go to or rather glide one seconds to 
and you want to change that 1 6 to be 0.56 and you also want to change that random position to be end chord. So put the end chord just like you put it for the start chord. Now keep in mind this would just result in the sprite moving and you wouldn't really have any line drawn. So to draw the line what you need to do is initially when green flag is clicked head over to the pen extension and say clear all or erase all and then right here what we need to do is to first of all set pen color to be the color of the sprite. So you can click on that and then scroll a bit down and click on this color picker option and then you can move to the stage and click on that uh, nice little circle and you would have the exact color pop up. So the line would seemingly be drawn by the circle itself. So once you have the set pen color to, now you want to type in pen down. And this is going to make sure that the sprite can actually draw and it's drawing. So now I'm going to wait for a tiny millisecond so that the, uh, you know, the sprites actually have time to hide and we don't do this too early. So add in a point, we, uh, a wait point one seconds there. And now we have go to start chord and light point five seconds to end chord. Perfect. So now I'm going to let either, oh yeah, actually we haven't called our function just as yet. So I'm going to head over to the computer sprite and uh, call in our function first for the player. Now keep in mind that when we're calling the um, function for our computer, it's going to be a little bit different, but we will do that and we'll come to that in just a second. So I'm going to make this move a bit down, duplicate this, just keep this if statement and say if played is equals to false, then we are going to actually just remove that as well. So all we want to do is to first check the end game for the player and to check if the player has actually won. So we don't want to type in P, we want to type in X and we'll do the end game for O a little bit later, but this is going to be the general idea for the player. Now let's get into calling this function in for the computer. The first thing I want to do is to actually initialize the win variable because that's pretty essential in doing what we want. So I'm going to add in a when green flag is clicked and say set win to false. So set win to false, there we are. I think I did this earlier, but I'm not so sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it again. So now all of this code that is if played is equals to false is actually going to be nested within this if then, which is if win equals to false. And the reason we have this win is so that we don't go ahead and perform this entire uh, function or rather set of functions if either the player or the computer have actually ended up winning already. In that case, we wouldn't want to, you know, check if some square is vacant. And then we're also going to have in a function which is going to basically set if it's stalemated or if neither the player or the computer has won. So in that case, it's going to be pretty important to not have, you know, that code going on in case end game actually goes on to execute the game over message. So have an if then which says if win equals to false, add in the variable in the left hand section and um, you want to nest all of this code within that. So just drag and drop all this code right here. Now we need actually another if then or rather an if else. So what I'm going to do is to head over to control, grab an if else. I'm going to just duplicate this condition right here and change this. So what I want in this condition is to check if and you want to grab this block of code from the variables category within lists and say if not possible moves if square list contains and just put in a space bar right there. So there's a space bar right here. And if that is the case, then you want to do all this. Now, the reason we do this is or actually uh, put that within the if win equals to false and you want to nest all of this within uh, if square list contains thing. So the reason we do this is to check if the board is stalemated or not. So if the board is completely occupied, then neither the player or the computer can make a move. And in which case this thing is not going to be the case. And then we're going to execute this else condition. Now within the else condition, what we have is pretty simple. All we're going to do is to broadcast a new message and that is going to be called stalemate. And we'll get into programming that a little bit later. But what you want to do for now is to just have that in place. To finish things off with the computer end game function, all you have to do is to head over to my blocks and just add in this end game right after you broadcast move made. And within the end game, what you want to do is to just type in and uh, you want to type in 
O. And that is the symbol that corresponds to the computer and that's what you want right there. So get into your thumbnail sprite and you want this code to initialize when the green flag is clicked. So when the green flag is clicked, we want to show the thumbnail. And now I just want to mention right here that the th uh, thumbnail isn't actually scaled to size. So I'm going to head over to the costumes of the thumbnail and actually convert it to a vector first. Now what I want to do is to enlarge it and make sure that it fits the screen completely. And uh, you can do that by dragging all those little dots that you can see on your on all the four sides. And I'm going to make sure that this extends on all four sides towards the end of the screen. Now this looks, this doesn't exactly look like the best image you can draw. And as you can see, the thing seems like it's been pulled up upwards. And if you want to avoid that, what you can do is to extend it on either the uh, right side or the left side as well. And that's going to make sure that the image looks a lot better. So it's a lot more scaling to size if you see it that way. So now I think this looks pretty good and if you do want to play uh, with this around you can do that for some time but I'm going to just settle down with this. So we want to head over right to the center of the screen when we actually show. So I'm just going to add in one line of code which says go to x0, y0 and that's going to make sure the thumbnail is nice flush in the center. So we're going to actually make this thumbnail you know disappear when the A key is pressed. So what I'm going to do is to head over to events, grab a when A key is sorry, when A key is pressed and change that space to be A. And what you want to do is to just hide the thumbnail. So just have in a hide right there and perfect. You're good to go with your thumbnail. So let's actually test our code now. I'm going to hit the green flag, hit the A key and the thumbnail disappears. And now I'm just going to let the computer win. And you can see that kind of has a really, really weird line. And that's because we've drawn the line before, you know, the sprite actually goes to the particular location. So I'm going to head over to the drawer sprite and uh, we want to actually set pen down only after we go to the start call. So have the pen down set up right there. Perfect. And um, you should have that work. So I'm going to head back to the one sprite for some reason and then click on OK. So I'm going to click the A key and oopsie, nothing pops up. And I'm going to click the A key and once again, just nothing seems to pop up. And that's because we have not actually shown our sprites. And I should have done this earlier, but I didn't. So what you're gonna have to do right now is to just add in a show when the green flag is clicked for every sprite. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be back in a second. So I just added a show on every sprite and now I'm going to retest this. So hit the green flag, click the A key. And now when you actually let the computer win, now you can see a pretty nice line pops up. Now obviously we can make this a bit thicker and also a bit slower because I think that was a bit too fast but we can get into that in future videos. So for now this is what you're going to have and that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.